Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Good. Okay, right, we're good. Cool, cool. So Paul wanted to talk with you guys. Yeah. He's like, hey, I like to do live feeds. Let's do live. I like live. What we're doing. Yeah, yeah, I like live. Are you going to show him that you have on cowboy boots and no pants? <laughs> <laughs> he does, dude. <laughs> he's got a, he does have cowboy boots on. When, I can when show he, you the boots. I don't know if I can get them up there. Yeah, he's not that flexible. Not that flexible. And I'm kind of hurting right now. What happened? Those are really nice boots. Every time are, I buy man. cowboy boots, I look like a just like a weird queer guy. <laughs> Every time I put them on, I, I go to I like see those. I'm like, oh, I want those, and then I put them on, and it's all like, right? Yeah, I know. Like I'll see somebody wearing like boots or something. I'm like, man, they look cool. <laughs> I'm gonna get some boots. <laughs> they look good. At <laughs> and then I'm like staggered around, like slipping, <laughs> like. like <laughs> Like when you first try like six inch heels and you're like, you know, yeah, I know exactly, yeah, exactly, what, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So, so we wanted to talk about what we did at S12. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a life changing event, man. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. I do. Don't you? Well, yeah, I do. But I'm yeah, gonna... I mean, based on what people say, <laughs> <laughs> off the based on what people tell us and feedback you get from guys, you know, it's like, a, it's a life altering thing, man. Like people make significant changes. Like, uh, trajectory changes trajectory yeah Keep like going. i'm gonna do some adjustments like they uh they show up uh um in a in a certain place and it seems like you know they make enough encounters and enough connections with people there that it alters kind of the trajectory they're on mm -hmm. and then you see them at the next event or you hear from them you know over the years or over the time or whatever yeah, it might be there we go and um and they tell you like hey i started eating different foods oh yeah i slowed down smoking or i'm trying to stop smoking yeah we had or, a few dudes lose three figures yeah mm -hmm. yeah like guys are like hey you know i made differences i started training jujitsu because of z or you know different you. guys me yeah guys uh influence them in that direction they started dry firing or even uh one person told me <clears throat> that he started carrying and training and everything with what he actually carries every day instead of you know what i mean like Makes coming to the, yeah, yeah. yeah instead of like coming to a class and running a 17 or a 34 he's like hey i carry a 42 or whatever it is every day yeah, so yeah. let me just do that all the time it kind of makes some good sense yeah yeah and, and uh, i think that's kind of your influence i know you influence less like in that direction i tried to talk him out of it but he wouldn't listen to me your influence is too great well i think that that like that that Somebody like him could pick up whatever gun and do oh. some good work with it. All he's going to need is sights and a trigger. Yeah, and, he'll and do he's going to make it hit. Yeah, yeah. But I think average people, mortals, when you've only got hours a year, yeah, like he was shooting fifty thousand rounds a year normally on top so of dry fire. Yeah, on top of all the dry fire. So that's a different animal. But I think if you're only going to go like coppers, you're only going to train so much, then train in the damn gear that yeah, you carry that same gun all the yeah, time. And yeah. the one gun thing, yeah. you know, I talked about that with Simon Golub, you know, Julie's husband. Mm -hmm. We talked about that one time because we were talking about one gun mm -hmm. and my kind of my interpretation of the one gun thing is if you carry a Glock 17 for work, then practice, then have a spare Glock 17 that you practice with and compete with and all that. And then have like a third Glock 17 on standby. Yeah. You know, that you can either ro rotate in or scavenge for parts. If it's you hard to. for some people to have it a is. couple thousand dollars of guns just looking it is. around. But. Yeah, yeah. And then like sometimes we're fortunate to be in a position where we're like, here, take this. Yeah. You know, and you get guns from people. So not everybody has that. Um, but Simon's thing was more of just one gun. Like, this is your gun. Makes That's sense. That's it, you know, and just do everything with that one gun, you know. And if you do save up enough money to have a second gun or whatever it might be, then just keep that in reserve. But I always wanted to learn how to golf and just show up with, like, a seven iron. Yeah. Like, that's what Yeah, I like the enduro golf. Yeah. yeah, like the enduro golf guys. Is that a thing? The, yeah, so enduro golf is you get uh, one wood, one iron. Hmm. And then... Um, yeah, well, you get two you clubs, pick, you so you can pick. Yeah, you can pick. Like, you can have, like, a putter and whatever. And then, um, so you get two things, and then it's on. And you have to run from 
Yeah, so you're whacking and whack it and run. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, there's a lot of whacking. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to golf, but I always thought it would be funny just to show up with like a club and a pack of cigarettes. You know, <laughs> just like I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. You know? yeah, and a 44. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Don't draw. worry about that. Yeah, that's, don't worry about that's, that. That's in case I lose. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, so I think there's something to that. And I know uh, Les started carrying like the smaller or training more of a smaller gun, mm-hmm. you know, after talking 32. to you. Yeah, after talking to you and, and stuff. And uh, I was like, man, don't listen to him. Man, just is, carry his stuff. Bullshit. That's bullshit. But uh, no, but I think that's that's the kind of stuff you see coming out of S12 where you see these guys making significant changes. And uh, I thought, man, that's really cool. Like, I don't think we talk about that side of it enough because i think at least for me anyway i kind of feel like um like those people that knock on your door on saturday mornings like want to introduce you to their personal savior or whatever it might be and you get kind of gets kind of weird but at the same time you know i mean i talk about jujitsu like that i talk you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like uh, like i see significant changes happen in people like i see guys lose hundreds of pounds become better people and then why do i not want to talk about that yeah why do i want to be like you oh, write about that all the time i do you yeah. know but i also get pushback from it from some people people sometimes that are from the outside of it will be like oh let's you know let me guess you're gonna talk about jujitsu again is this friends or family people that know you well no it's usually just people that are you know on the outskirts mm. that are kind of like outliers orbiters whatever you want to call them yeah and um and so uh, sometimes it makes you kind of wonder, like, oh, man, am I a little too preachy about this? But then at the same time, it's like if you knew, like, um, you know, like like Tony, you know, like the situation with his son, with Will and all that. If you knew, like, this guy's going to come here in such a place of pain and he's going to leave, mm-hmm. like, in such a better place, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you yeah, want to get that guy here? Yeah, You know, like, mm-hmm. and so there's that side of me that, like, still kind of feels like oh i don't want to like be knocking on somebody's door at seven in the morning saturday you know but the other side of me is like well maybe they need it i had a conversation with somebody about this a couple days ago and they were saying man it's really cool how you let guys come there that can't afford to and in the big scheme of things it's not that we just let guys come there like that guy that you're talking about like we've we can shove a few people into that course and they get absorbed in the total cost with food and a bed and stuff. Yeah, and they're sponsors. Yeah. You know, it says sure. it'll sponsor. Yeah. And I thought about it and I said, man, it it's, means nothing to me. Meaning not like I don't give a shit, but it means nothing to me in the sense of I'm not having to write a big check or it's not any, um, there's no hindrance for me to do that. Yeah. I'm not having to carry any load. Uh, what an asshole of a human it that costs you nothing it doesn't mean any like extra work to you and yeah. you withhold that from somebody right it's pretty it's a pretty shitty human if you do that yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know and that's the thing it's like well how do we get the word out and it's like well i gotta talk about it yeah like we gotta talk about it we gotta tell people about it get people interested get people into it like they don't it, it's not the the dunning kruger thing you know you don't know what you don't know and um type thing it's not using that like a club to beat people over the head because that was intended to be a a process of self-examination um but it's kind of like if they don't know how will they know if i don't tell them yeah you know so when we put that thing together the initial point was and it still stayed there but it was to take a group of people that like Um, If I went to like the restaurant association show in Chicago, I'm going to have access to a group of world class chefs that I'd never have access to different, but the same. And that's what it was like you, you got you and Z and D day and some of the other guys like Corey that were there and uh, Daryl that didn't make it this year because of the the COVID and Joel Um, Aaron Cooper has been there. It's like, you're Mm -hmm. never going to get a cross section of people like that. You go to there's other training events like the Givens event, yeah, yeah. But if that's a completely different animal, right? You know that's yeah, like, yeah. Um, that's like a, a smorgasbord of of food where you you know go put a pile yeah, on, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just pile in a different put sample different things. Yeah, this stuff. is like an immersion with where yeah. you're with, you're together for 12, 13 hours a day. 
Right. Sleeping yeah, together, that's the thing. showering together. Mostly showering. Checking for ticks together. That was a big thing. It was Z a big saved thing. my life twice. Mm -hmm. Two ticks almost back to back. Why are you putting almost suntan right lotion here. on me? It's nine o'clock at night. <laughs> just <laughs> hold still and shut up. Exactly. <laughs> it's for your own I'm safety. Like, like, didn't you just check there for ticks? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't I haven't been outside. Some of these people don't find this funny. They probably don't. Sorry, guys. But that but, that, that that's like a different dynamic when you are together you're having all your meals together mm -hmm. a lot of those other events it's like okay we come to the range or to the mat we train and then we'll see you tomorrow or end of the day yeah and you and you go through all the same processes together mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like the, the um like the straight plus gym camps you know which by the way is the gym that paul's affiliated with yeah so you end up going all day like you train all the way through like you the thread there's a common thread and you train all the way through with those guys. Like, so the whole group stays together and then the instructors just kind of rotate mm -hmm. out, you know? Mm -hmm. So each one of us will have 90 minutes and then it goes over a course of two and a half days. And it's the same thing here where everybody stays together mm -hmm. and then we rotate out, mm -hmm. you know, we bounce out and, and it, it's just, it's like you said, it's an immersive experience and it just, I see so much benefit. Yeah, you know it really is, and um, and like you said, there, and <clears throat> the other thing too is you have people there like Cecilia who didn't really talk a whole lot, but when she did have things to say individually to people, like I heard back later, mm -hmm. like you know it was, it's just cool to have her here, or you know different people like that where they didn't really say a whole lot, but when they did say stuff, it, it benefited something. people. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then and, you know, and then, like she's got a phenomenal story too. Mm -hmm. You know, just like coming back from this death near death experience you know it's just insane you know mm -hmm. so that's another thing that happens there is you you kind of get this these moments where you talk to people and you realize like holy cow you know like this person's been through whatever it might be you know um you know the first conference i had a chance to talk to don and some of the stuff he's gone through and and different guys and then people come up to you and talk to you you know and i think it's because of that immersive experience where you're there you know, and you kind of like your the barriers start to come down because yeah. you're just like we're all in this together. It's kind of like when you're having a sleepover or something. Even yeah, yeah. eventually, it's like okay, you're gonna see me with my hair messed up. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, exactly. You're gonna see me in my right. my Spider Man pajamas. Those are the best. Mm -hmm. Those are the best. Green Lantern. Green Lantern. Green you Lantern. love Green Lantern. But yeah. that you know what I mean. Z killed me on that one. Yeah, because he's not a fan. But the he's not a fan of Green Lantern. I don't really get it either, but that's okay. It's about Will, man. I mean, I get the Green Lantern. I just don't get why a grown-up is obsessed with a cartoon comic book character. That's cool, though, man. Man, you it's know? a mythology. It's so, the mythology. I, I, get, I get it. Yeah, I'm a I fan mean, of mythology. I get it. So, like, the, the labors of Hercules and um, Hunama and all that different, all those different things. Like, the mythology, the, the pursuit of something greater than myself by service to others is just appealing to me like a dig it yeah so, i dig it i just you know i just you still think it's dumb no i don't think it's dumb i don't think it's dumb i don't think, still it's, think it's dumb. dumb did you ever see the lego movie yeah all right so where they all make fun of the green lantern constantly I didn't like all the other like it. batman and superman oh and yeah 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 <laughs> i gotta watch it and green lantern's like it. come on guys you know like is that the first one yeah like everything is awesome now, so we're not everything is awesome i watch it best again. song ever you should start every morning with that song. Just makes you feel good. Uh, my alarm clock right now is "Come and Get Your Love." I like do, it. Do do do. I like do, it. Do, do, For do, a long do, time, do, mine was do, "Run do. to the Hills." Oh really? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but uh -oh. that event back back to it. It's you know, I think some people might hear this and be like, "Man, I ain't, I don't need fixing." No. So it's like. Cool. Don't yeah, have yeah. those conversations. No, that's Don't cool. Talk about D and B and Scotch over in the corner with those yeah, guys. Yeah, for sure. Broken people are over. Here with <laughs> yeah, us. We're, all, we're, all, we're all sitting at home. <laughs> One person holding a box of tissues. Like, that's you know? a joke. Yeah. No, but I think what it is, it's like a lot of things. It's just the process uh, where you expose weaknesses, but you they're exposed in such a way that people are encouraged to, you know, fix it. Like you're given a plan. Like uh, nobody just breaks you down or or nobody just shows you that you suck and then leaves you like yeah. you know walks away from you like you, people walk away with with training plans people walk away with 
like an idea of how to not even fix like maybe they just want to improve something mm -hmm. you know like i had conversations with people about strength and conditioning you know vegetarian stuff you know like that cool. we're actually cooking a vegan dinner here this yeah, evening. Right. so My, but, minus the ribeye that i've got ready to go <laughs> on the grill <laughs> yeah all right about about that <laughs> um, but i thought you said it was tofu but um yeah so you know you have conversations with people about that kind of stuff where you know they're just little things they can do to kind of tweak themselves and then all those little one percent of improvement you know the sum becomes this mm -hmm. larger thing you know mm -hmm. it's just it's, in, it's really incredible i think it's so, also cool for people as we're all on this journey we have different folks that we can look to as an example yeah. you know you to me me to you whatever for different things and then you see oh that guy who i i am respecting because he's teaching me this thing yeah. is admitting to having the same problems i have not even oh, yeah. on like a like a, a deep level but like i do that same stupid thing with my thumb on the gun like right. here's how i stopped doing it oh mm -hmm. cool i'm not an idiot it's, yeah 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 you know what i mean yeah and that's the thing like different like i've been on a the last couple of days i've been trying to um kind of master the wedge, the wedge. You know, I mass wedge. i use wedge yeah and uh and you know like you were at tech on like he comes up that's like the third time that he's come up like during my block to share deeper insight into yeah. the wedge you know because it's his thing it was 1974 yeah right i'm like he's right there you know when people so um he'll come up and and so i get the chance to stand there while he dives into it with people and i've also had i don't know how many conversations with him about it you know um so like, if you're not familiar with Ayub's wedge, it's how the non-dominant hand wedges under the frame of the pistol. Yeah. So you wedge up tight and you end up with your middle fingers actually aligned. So you end up with your fingers like knuckle row on knuckle row. And then this finger is kind of out here. And you can you can hook the trigger guard if you want or just kind of let it float. And then you just bring it all in. It, cr it creates a really good wedge. Wedge. <laughs> and, uh, I like it. And uh, so... But that's, you know, I was talking about that with one of the students that was shooting a small gun. And I said, hey, man, you know, try the wedge. That's it's it's excellent for smaller guns and blah, blah, blah. And then and then I realized, you know, like I'm talking to somebody else about all the advantages of this thing while not practicing it myself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's great. Man. Yeah. I mean, I don't do it, but it's cool. And uh, so you I, need to. I don't think I need to. Like, I think my shooting is pretty decent. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I mean, what could it hurt to yeah. explore it, to yeah, see yeah. if I can get like that 1% or whatever a uh, degree of improvement from just another tweak and maybe combine that with what I'm already doing and then, you know, see where it takes me. So, uh, I mean, in dry fire, my splits are killer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> never miss. I yeah, haven't missed yet. I mean, that, that pistol sits flat in dry fire. So, uh, but yeah, I would be interested in seeing, um, seeing what happens. So I want to play around with it. But that's the thing. Like I came out of that place where, cause this, you know, the, the shooter said to me, is, is this how you shoot? Cause it didn't look like this is what you were doing. You know, I was like, well, you know, there's also, that also begs the question though. And I talk about this a lot when we compare ourselves most people don't have your grip strength yeah. or just on average an average person's not a jujitsu guy that spent years grabbing things doing weightlifting yeah. mu muscle in bone density and size like you might not have to you can get away with stuff that yeah yeah that's another thing too right like i can get away with some stuff you know um like i, I I do the demonstration where I just I kind of just hold the gun with the middle finger and, and I just hold the front strap and mm -hmm. the gun doesn't move. And the example is to show people if you just chalk that front strap, the gun won't lift. Mm -hmm. And kind of the lesson that some people got from that was if I lift more weights, the gun won't move because then I'll be strong enough. You know what I mean? Like, which it, is true. It is true. Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely true. Because you can just dominate it with bad form. <laughs> yeah, you can just grip it so hard the mm -hmm. world stops spinning. Um, but that's the, you know, but, you know, yeah. So there are some things you can overcome just by being strong. And, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, just the size and everything in your hands and density. But 
I don't know. It's a, but that's I what I mean. I wasn't saying that was correct. I was just saying that no, like no, sometimes I get when somebody says that, it's like I'm telling you to use this technique because you don't have the same hand yeah. strength as me. Look at you. Right. Look at yourself. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> You're weak, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, that, so that's something that came, I came away from was, man, I need to work on this more and, and see, you know, if, if the medicine I'm recommending for other people would also be beneficial for me. You know, Corey's that, targets yeah. made you want to go train, not just you, but me too. Oh, yeah. You shoot those things. And you're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you get addicted to that. Um, dude, I, I would have burned thousands of rounds. You could. We easy, shot. Easily. So Corey Zillig, the ZF technical targets, if you don't know what they are, we got a video up here on YouTube of them. It's like Roger's range where the targets come up and down and they're all controlled by an iPad and you can move the targets wherever. Yeah, you can move the little robots. We went, That's we instructors so cool. went down there to shake them out and make sure they were working good. I had a couple of ammo cans full. I think in like <laughs> 30 minutes between like six guys, we shot 1,500 rounds of ammo. Yeah. Just... Give I know little, I went through like more. 10 or 12 mags mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. Yeah. All There's my mags are 50 rounds. Yeah. Just all my mags are topped off and mm -hmm. yeah, I just burned them up. It was fun. <laughs> it was. But, it's, but you, it's it's hard yeah. and you watch and you're like, okay, easy. I can shoot it. But then the thing starts speeding up and if they're little targets, they're only this big. Yeah. So I like that too. They're not just some big silhouette. Like, yeah. It's not like a big giant, mm -hmm. you know. So it's really cool. And then those round, those plates, they always can mess with your head, you know, because if you get a little too high or a little, just takes a little bit to miss. You got to be right on. The yeah, because you have that rounded parts of it. So it, it, that was really cool. I think that's that's genius. Mm -hmm. You know, those, that target system, that's legit, man. I'm yeah. like, I want to get one of those from my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I don't know how I'd get away with it, but yeah. I would. So, did you get my Paintball. email about November? Yes. Talking about adding a day. Yeah. Yeah, um, I did. Did you get it or no? <laughs> I didn't read it. Yet. Oh. I'm terrible at checking my email. Yeah, I know. I'm terrible. I also. Oh, so you didn't get the uh, memo about being paid extra? Had you read it? <laughs> you didn't read it, right? I didn't. I didn't. So I was about, looking for a barbershop. We've talked a few times about adding a day to that. Yeah. So we're talking now about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so that we can have. Nice. More time, more time and less more time and less running around to try to get things done so like yeah. you know we can have 15 more minutes between resting oh, yeah. and that would be good i think that would help a lot um i know with the combative station i think our time was pretty decent this time you know this time around um z had to physically fight 31 people that was rough mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a beast, though. Yeah, he did it. He's a beast. He did it. Um, yeah, he did really well in um, metering his, you know. What he needed to yeah, get what he, Yeah, to, to each guy and gal. Um, and they they did well, man. They did real well. So I think that was a big eye-opener for a lot of people, you know, was realizing if it's a don't shoot yet situation, but I've already got my gun out. Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, I can't just toss the gun. Mm -hmm. Might not be able to holster, especially if you're carrying appendix and you have a striker gun and you try to holster that thing under test under pressure. Um, something gets hung up in the in the trigger guard or you get some sort of if you don't have like a striker control device or something that lets you know, like the trigger's moving because it's hung up in clothing or whatever it might be, you're going to you're going to shoot yourself, mm -hmm. you know, so. I think some folks kind of figured that part out where it's like, oh, man, this isn't as easy as it looks. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, hosing them down and then speed reholstering appendix. Like, that looks cool, you know, so it's not, mm -hmm. you know, until something gets hung up in there. And um, that's one of the, like, that's one of the benefits of the hammer guns, mm -hmm. you know, um, is you can ride that hammer. And so I think a lot of people kind of got a, got a glimpse of that. What he's talking about is literally two combatants would fight over a gun right yeah or over until somebody could obtain a gun and right. shoot and the get other the, yeah get a shot off get mm -hmm. a good hit and and we, we drill These it in not isolation. real guns no no we drill it in isolation um yeah we had real guns <laughs> like well that was a quick session you don't gotta feed him lunch <laughs> yeah. session's over oh uh, guys start rifling through his gear mm -hmm. you know uh but uh so we do stuff in isolation so like one of the isolation drills we would do 
is uh, let's say we start both of us gun out, you know, so you have control of my gun hand, I have control of your gun hand, go. You know, and we start right here from what would potentially be a close to worst case scenario mm -hmm. and, and then figure it out. And then through experience, they kind of learn. And we didn't just throw them to the wolves. You know, this is after. After a couple of days of building. Yeah, some a couple of days of combative skills. Yeah, so a couple of days of some stuff. And it's like, okay. Getting used to feeling somebody pushing against you and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, well, let's, let's turn them loose. See what happens, you know, and we give them a minute, so a minute to work. And at the end of the minute, if it, if it hadn't been resolved on its own, we would just call it. Occasionally, know? they just toss like a baton into the circle, a length of chain. Uh, I'm just kidding. A cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a bingo cat. Yeah. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> just turn them loose. That's something I heard from a lot of the guys like um, – same thing that that you guys do with your other shib work stuff. Holy shit, I'm not nearly as fit or I'm less fit than I even thought I was. Yeah. That not realizing that that kind of load and the fear of looking less than in front of a group of dudes and sure. the adrenaline guys were winded in yeah. 20 30 seconds. Yeah. It, it's an eye opener, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of guys physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, um cuz you got to be able to think and that's tough, you know, when you're, like you said, you're in front of your peers. So you got that weirdness, you know, anxiety, performance anxiety. Stop judging me. Yeah, right. Like, oh, man, I can't look bad in front of my dudes. And then the unknown, like, you don't really know this guy you're going up against. You don't mm -hmm. know what he's bringing to the table. Yeah. And then sometimes they kind of have this, like, agreed upon cadence in the beginning where they're kind of like, hey, let's just go cool. You know what I mean? Like. Nobody get hurt, you know, mm -hmm. type thing. And then they get in there and then they thought 50 miles an hour. Well, the other guy's like, oh, I thought we were counting in kilometers. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like there was a miscommunication. So they're like, hey, let's go light. Okay. Yeah. You know, and so He's then bleeding again. Yeah. And so you could kind of see it amp up, but it was never out of control. And it was always a very, a very much a uh, let's make each other better mm -hmm. type thing. So that's real cool too, you know, to see is that I think that's a top down thing. I think uh, it it kind of bleeds down from the instructors and everything that we're all just here to make each other better. Mm -hmm. And so when it does come time for those final evaluations and applications and stuff, everybody ends up being very supportive and very much, you know, you hear them cheering each other on. Yeah. You know, you hear them like encouraging each other and stuff. Until so realize that there's things to be won. Yeah, right. There's a prize table. Oh, you want to see the wedge? Well, I can go grab. I'll go grab a, a demo gun. It's gonna get the demo gun. So basically, the wedge is a uh, knuckle roll on knuckle roll, and you roll your fingers up underneath of the trigger guard. It creates a really tight. Yeah. So we got a demo gun here. So basically, your middle finger makes contact with the trigger guard, and you roll the other fingers up underneath and wedge everything into the bottom of the trigger guard. It creates a lot of pressure into the gun. So you end up here. So you end up coming up in here, and then you roll your fingers up. So kind of see like how that – so you end up with your fingers kind of on each other. So like my middle fingers on, and ring finger and pinky are all on top of each other. So you kind of stack there, and then you can kind of drive that in there. So – it's a really stable uh, shooting position, uh, puts you up high on the gun. So sometimes there's issues with the slide lock bumping that up. For me, what ends up happening is I close my hand down like this and it pins the slide lock down. So then it, the slide won't lock back when the magazine is uh, depleted. But it's a really effective way to... Um, to manage a pistol and when uh, mass design editor came up with that idea it was to get enough of the hand up in here to kind of help counteract counteract the trigger torque or whack whatever you want to call it where guys were shooting these heavy um, service weapons like berettas and sigs and stuff with uh, 12 to 18 pound triggers and the, the double action smiths and what it did was it put your thumb and your uh, offside your support hand finger wrapped around all of this 
up in here so that it stabilized it so it wouldn't move. So when you press the trigger, the your other hand was actually outer, acting as a counterbalance to that, or I don't even know what you would call it, a counter force to that sideward movement. So a lot of times when people are pushing shots to the to the left with pistols and stuff, it's because of what Tom Gibbons calls the trigger finger bicep, right? So it, when you press the trigger, your finger here, he calls it the trigger finger bicep. It presses the frame, and that actually causes the, the pistol to move a little to the left. That's what he calls that. Mm -hmm. Never heard him give that speech. Yeah, so it actually it rubs across the frame, and it calls, especially on Glocks because they're square, um, and it causes that gun. And that's why a lot of guys will end up shooting to the left because um, you have the trigger safety and then also that trigger bicep thing. So what? Hey, Derek. Derek Morfield. What's up, Derek? So what that does is uh, helps to counteract all that stuff, especially when you had the New York triggers in the Glocks. It gave you like a 12-pound trigger pull. So that's that's why Mass came up with that, uh, created that. I don't know how or what the – I want to say he told me, but – I remember reading about it as a kid. Yeah, yeah, he told me how he came up with it. I think it was almost, like most things kind of by accident. Um, Which is so funny. Come up with this. Look what I came up with. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Came up but it was with. all the little things behind it, you know, and it, it it fixed the problem that a lot of people were facing, especially police trainers dealing with, you know, the heavy triggers and stuff. So it's, it's I right. like it. I'm going to answer a few of these questions. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, can you scroll down and see if we missed anybody? Or We can, but I don't, I mean. You don't want to mess with I, it? I don't, no, it's not that. Uh or was it just that? Do most people at the event carry outside the waistband or inside the waistband? The answer is it doesn't matter. Um, you come like we were talking about to begin with, however you want to. So if you want to carry outside the waistband, carry outside the waistband. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It's not a competition, nor is it a matching festival. Um, the event, we hold that in Tennessee, outside of Nashville, about an hour outside of Nashville on a 450-acre private retreat. Uh, you stay there. You eat there. It's pretty sweet. The fourth day, no, um, we're not really interested in bringing back the carbines because none of you, how many of you carry a carbine around every day? Even if you're a copper, you don't really carry a carbine. It's in the, your trunk, and the odds of you having it are slim to none. Got it under my coat. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. We've been, we did the, the carbine training. We could do it. What happens is so many guys show up or gals and their shit's broken oh, or yeah. like their slings aren't right. They're not zeroed. And it could work if you came and your stuff was tight and right. And we could just yeah. say, grab your gun and let's go train. But what happens is we eat up four or five hours, just like, you know, zeroing stuff yeah, and fixing help. slings. Yeah. Your parts just fell off. Oh, yeah. And, and that it, just, it just takes, it burns up so much time yeah. and it becomes more uh, an exercise in just fulfilling, like checking a box. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we got to shoot the carbines. Well, who gives a shit? Yeah, we didn't get, any, get anything done. Though. Yeah. 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 Like, so I kind of, that after makes sense. three years of doing it or three events, it took so much time away from more meaningful stuff. Mm. Um, so what is the next training session? I don't know what that means. When is? So the next one's in November. Is there a good grip possible without the extreme thumbs forward? It's, I wouldn't say that's new school style, but um, I'm having trouble losing my old crust thumbs. Well, don't change it. If it works, the target doesn't lie. Yeah, if you're making hits, man, don't change. You know, this, uh, we've got a friend, Eric Camps. This is how he shoots a Glock, just like this, and he's a... Yeah, national really level well. shooter grandmaster yeah. it's, it's it's all just about what works for you yeah. and if it doesn't work then change it i would experiment with the wedge if you can and no more pressure with support hand and re relaxed firing hand grip the gun like you mean it that's like a weird thing too mm -hmm. like you know how much pressure depends if you're super strong or you have really dry skin like one day i made the mistake of putting um i washed my hands at the range and yeah. their soap had like lotion in it oh i and i couldn't get it that's off that's a of good me. time i couldn't yeah, there was no soap to get the soap off of yeah me. yeah because it's just more of the lotion yeah so yeah. i'm like i'm like like literally i went out to my truck and i'm like what do i have 
kill those sand. Yeah, that I can like get there was it was winter like time dirt or whatever. I took snow and oh, was trying yeah, to yeah. ice crystals to scrape. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't. It was just like, you know, it was like I had lotion on me. Oh, so that sucks. just that alone, like I had grip. And it was the little 365. So I'm like trying to grip the shit That's out of awesome. it. Good. Maybe a carbine class for exactly. We do do carbine classes. Josh is asking when we're going to open the gym. What's up, Josh? Which Josh? Where is he at? Josh Laluz. Hey, Rob One Johnson. Um, we're hoping by May 30. Our plan is May 30th to have everything back up and, and running. I'm. Yeah, don't even, seeing, don't even people, get me started. Don't even get me started on this. People going forward. Don't even get me started on this mess. Thanks, um, Derek. Derek. So Derek was there. Derek's a former army guy, and he's a jujitsu guy, and he he's been to a few of our classes. It's it's. I, I guess re, I, I want to pound pound that answer home so people hear it. And since this is on YouTube, this will stay up. It's not about that. We don't want to train with the carbines. It's that the goal of the event is to take as much as we can pound into to 40 hours of training and make it as valuable as possible for people to have skills that will p protect themselves and their families. Well, what if a, a horde of murder hornets? Yeah, murder hornets. Then, yes, you should train with your carbine. I love teaching the carbine classes and taking carbine training, but it's just for the bang for the buck, it's just not there. Yeah. Derek's a good example of what we were talking about earlier. Did you see that picture he posted on his Facebook earlier today? Good, good point, just old Joe. I couldn't find any my alcohol prep pads to get. Oh, shit yeah, yeah, that'll hand. clean it off. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, um, Derek posted a picture from like three years ago, and uh, he looks like a totally different animal now. Oh yeah, him and um, Dan, uh, Dan, they were yeah. both kind of thick. They were both different animals, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. That's like that's what we're talking about. Like that's jujitsu or, or this stuff. It's just it's a it's a, a an activity that um, basically causes us to pursue healthy habits mm -hmm. to support the activity. Like if I want to be better at jujitsu, I'm gonna have to drink more water. I'm gonna have to eat better food. I'm gonna have you know what I mean. So I'm gonna stretching. have to do all those yeah. things that make it so I can do my jujitsu or so I, if I want to well, shoot keep better. Getting choked. Yeah, or like if I want to shoot better, well, we'll or I want to do like the T Triple C course where I've got to run and carry stuff and do all these other things, and and then if I want to be that protector, you know, like you say, like be your own cavalry, you know, if I want to be my own cavalry, more than just a slogan on the T shirt, but I want to actually like apply it, live it, yeah. you know, then I'm gonna have to act like it. I'm gonna have to drink more water. I'm gonna have to work out. I'm gonna have to do these things. And the workout doesn't have to be something extravagant. You can do a simple workout like this. Um, you know, like a basic CrossFit workout is five push, uh, five pull-ups, ten push-ups, and fifteen air squats. And you just keep doing keep those going them until you're smoked. until you're done yeah, as many reps as possible, right? An AMRAP. So I'm gonna do an AMRAP of that for ten minutes. And let's say I'm in bad shape. I'm whatever life throwing me enough curveballs that I just I can't do more than two of those in succession yeah right okay that's my starting point keep going yeah I'm and listening. then the next then the next time i come in so i'm going to take a day off drink some water stretch all that good stuff next day i'm going to come back in i'm going to do that workout again because it's working all my major pull muscles all my major push muscles and it's working my lower body and i'm going to do it again this time my goal is to get three or maybe i'm going to do five ten fifteen five ten fifteen and then the third time i'm just going to count Keep going. And then the third time, I'm going to try to get two pull-ups, you know, five push-ups and six or seven squats, whatever it is. It's just more than I did before. And I'm getting there incrementally. I am getting to that place where I'm going to be, eventually I'm going to be in decent shape. So. We, uh, Robert from um, Roberto. It's yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's he, okay. He started out, uh, I told him last year, just do 10 push-ups and 10 air squats every 10 because he sits and sits yeah, yeah. now he's out like doing like 500 of each a day nice. yeah, I'm like, that's, yeah, that's pretty it good, man that's all it is but that's the stuff superville is probably not going to ever make 40 no it's kind of a dead round sorry offense put a nine barrel in that gun yeah just drop a nine kid in hey there. jay drop a nine kid in you're good to go i like 40 though man it's fun it's a hot little room i don't know what bill o'reilly says about that no about what? 
Uh, will you be doing the Ask 12 more than once a year? Yes, Jose, we do it every six to seven months. The next one's on the calendar in November. I got to give a legit shout out to the Gunfighter Oil. Well, good, man. I'm glad that you dig it. Yeah, Gunfighter Oil is good stuff. Tin Cup. Lock 19 is awesome. Okay, so now we're talking about Turkey being a NATO ally and sponsoring terrorism. I like the different thought threads, but sometimes we got to stay on. <laughs> sometimes. I mean, I, <laughs> what happened with Turkey? How did that come up? Somebody shooting a Canuck? Connect? What is it called? A Kenick? Oh, What's yeah, a Kenick. Yeah, a Kenick. A uh, left handed person and a right handed person, you're doing the same thing to control the gun. The only considerations would be where the controls are or on the gun. Oh, for the witch? Yeah, or just yeah, it's the same or thing. In general, yeah, it would be the same stuff. So everything would be the same. Wonder if it would be easier. Victor, uh, same training. Well, it's it's never the same training. We always adjust it slightly, but it's the same concept. Shoot the guns a lot. Learn to fight. Eat a lot of food. Learn how to stop people from bleeding to death. Have a lot of laughs. Tell a lot of dick jokes. Done. Done. Uh, can I drop a nine mil barrel and a 40? I don't know, Robert Johnson. I would check with yes. Walter and a, oh, and a PPQ. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know about that. In Glocks, you can. Yeah, in Glock, you can. It's just a bigger Easy. hole yeah. for the 40. So, that said, the reason that we were talking about this was not to talk about Paul's weird foot fetish, you sicko. Everybody's was, got needs. I think it's a. I think it is an important thing to kind of recap on these things. But some of this stuff, if you're not there, it's kind of like when somebody tries to like tell you about a movie they saw or a book they read, and you're like, yeah. I guess you just had to be there or had to read it. Sure. And and the this isn't for everybody. We're working. I mean, uh, I can't look back at it right now. I walked each day there a minimum of eight miles. Yeah. This um, is a lot of, yeah. I woke up every day between four and five and went to bed between 11 and one yeah and that, so they're very long days um and every every day so for the guys that weren't there so every day starts with uh some sort of pt so 6 15 uh we have a best there's a basketball court next to the main lodge now on the basketball court we do about 45 minutes of pt and it's not crazy. Yeah, no, it's nothing crazy. Um, Scott, Scott did. We tr kind of followed his model, which Scott is pug it. yeah, some uh, mobility work and that kind of thing. And and uh, I I miss Scott not being there, man. Me I was too. Kind of, I was bummed out he wasn't there. Me too. Um, but uh, we we uh, we did some of the stuff kind of in the in trying to keep true to his design. Uh, and then uh, we did a little bit of hand pump uh, hand fighting to set guys up for stop it, stop it. <laughs> to set guys up for um set guys up for uh i was like he's high-fiving me wow <laughs> yeah, wow um so it sets guys up for success later when we start doing the combative stuff and then we have breakfast everybody eats together so you have your main chow hall or, or whatever you want to call it we all have breakfast together get a chance to talk and hang and um and then from there we go to the range we worked on the range for a couple hours on a variety of things the first day we primarily focus on fundamentals because we want to make everybody on the same page make sure we're all on the same page make sure everybody's safe and nothing mm -hmm. crazy and fortunately we were all good there everybody's gear ran pretty well this time there wasn't any really i didn't notice any pistols really dying a horrific yeah we had a few time. yeah that uh that sig 320 Ate the shit the bed. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was an XD, too, right? XD was there an XD that went down? That's the one that was sh the barrel was starting to come apart. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The barrel was coming apart on that one. There was a couple. There was yeah, there's a couple in there. So, and then also there were people there who were one of the one of the barretas came apart. Did it? Yeah. Oh, that's right. The slide was moving or the uh, sight. The sight fell off. Yeah, the sight fell off. So there were, there was some, um, yeah. and that's the thing, you know. Not my gun. <laughs> And uh, my gun had some issues, um, so it, it's just one of those things where it's a it's a mechanical thing, you know. And and they're actually not meant to be used like we use them. Yeah, that's the thing. Most the guns that are built, I think, for the general public or general whatever you want to call it, they're not being run the way guys that come to S twelve. Just like my or trucks, us. not to meant be meant to 
have done to it what I do. <laughs> exactly. It's not. It's not. <laughs> and so it's a mechanical thing. And that's, you know, I was talking with uh, Dan from uh, Poly 80. We were talking about some of the issues and, and it's like, hey, man, like it's a mechanical thing. That's Dan from the vice president of operations for Polymer 80. Yeah. And, and we we're just like, it's a mechanical thing. We expect it to break. I got to answer a couple questions. Two things. Answer One, nine questions. millimeter versus 45 for home defense. Doesn't matter. It's about the bullet uh, having an expanding bullet because if you're shooting ball ammo. So based on what you're saying, that's not accurate. So you just want to use a bullet that's going to expand. And shot placement. And, of course, shot placement. Just don't shoot through your windows. Yeah, if you and... smack a dude in the mouth at 1,200 feet per second, it's going to change his plans. Yeah. Yeah. His concern was um, leaving the round, leaving the apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, over penetration yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as Mark's question about information to leave S12 with, yeah, the whole point is we say it over and over. We're teaching you how to teach yourself. It's mm -hmm. not just come here, hey, now you better come back, or you never. We're teaching you to teach yourself. So, yeah, we're illuminating what you need to do. Just old Joe. Joe, we had a guy there, a uh, 70-year-old doctor that walked with a cane that mm -hmm. took it. Uh, uh, we had we had a gentleman and he there. He did phenomenal he in did. the combatives. He did session like he, yeah, yeah. He got on Z's back. There's not, there's, yeah. we're, we're not telling you, okay, no matter your age or body type, you have to run a mile or something. You go, you do whatever you can do. It's it, it, there's people that that bow out. Nobody's going to judge you. Uh, right to your face <laughs> i'm just kidding Silently. no Silently. no there's a there's a uh, we've had people we had a guy uh with ms at this course before mm -hmm. we had one of our sponsors a few years ago that had a terrible uh spinal accident crashing a motorcycle mm -hmm. he has to be carried to the bathtub to the bed he can't okay. use one arm and he took the course i mean it required help so um I think what you said, just old Joe, people say that all the time and it's never, yeah, you don't want to be the weakling in the group. Nobody wants to be, but that's nobody there would look at you like that. Right. Yeah. yeah and the only competition, like we talk about all the time, the only competition is yourself. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, of course you're going to compete. You're going to look at other people and wonder where you stack up and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to be walking with you to your car in the target parking lot, but you. Mm -hmm. So we want you to be as capable as possible. And that's why we say at the event, you know, how many here are instructors? And some people raise their hands, some people don't. And then we tell them like, you guys are all instructors because somebody somewhere is gonna know you're the gun guy or you're the gun gal, you're the combatives. Per you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're gonna know that that's what they do. And so they're gonna ask you questions. And so. Grizzle the gamer guy. The basic level of knowledge is Total safety with your gun, know how to use a holster, know how to hit a target, say 15 yards in in, know how to keep the gun working. Um, I just actually shot a video before you got here, and it was, I take notes every time I do a class, like um, whatever it might be, what can I do better, what maybe some of my thoughts, and one of them is I'm seeing way too many people showing up for courses like when, when you sign up for one of our classes, we send you three video links and they're simple. Like here's how to use a holster in case you don't have a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. Like you can practice that all day yeah. long in front of a mirror and it might not be perfect, but it will at least if you're doing it, you know, you're going to not like shoot your hand yeah. and stuff. Like we had a lot of folks, not a lot, but guys that are more concerned about the speed of presentation versus the safety or, or repeatability. Yeah. yeah the consistency. Yeah. Like, like, or there was a couple guys that in this class and every class that you look at him, you're like, oh, that guy looks high speed, man. He's mm -hmm. got like sweet muscles and his gear looks cool. Mm -hmm. And then he's falling out of trees, yeah, birds yeah. are flying away. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think good old fashioned marksmanship and just knowing how to manipulate the gun, you know, how do I, yeah, how does this thing work? Yeah. Keeping it working. Yeah. Yeah. Screw all the, high speedness yeah it's again like like we said about less earlier right the like sights and triggers mm -hmm. he just needs something with sights that are metered to the gun you know and a trigger that works every time and he's going to do good work mm -hmm. so he will he will keep it running yeah he'll kill you, know? you yeah he'll keep it running he'll do good work hand and forearm strength paul's got some good advice on that as do i yeah. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> so, cocoa butter. So, uh, yeah, hand and uh, so grip strength is something. One of the things I always I'll caution picture in a minute. One thing I, I always caution people about is using those grippers, the Kings of Crush or whatever they are. Um, those things can hurt you if you're not careful. Like I, I use them. I have one. Uh, I, like I, overuse, like tendonitis. Yeah, or trying to go too too heavy, too fast. They'll they'll try to grab one and they'll just like squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until they can get that thing or try to get that thing crushed. And what they end up doing is damaging all these little small. Um, joints and ligaments and connective tissue in here and that takes a long time to recover because you're constantly using your hands so the other thing i, I like to table do, will hold 100 pounds i don't think it will it's kind of it's struggling dude oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> um but what, one of the things i like to do is if you can uh farmer carries right, you're, right. yeah just walk in carrying this weight and then um having like the towel like throw a towel over a chin and bar and just hang from the towel. If you can do your pull-ups using the towel, but just have that towel over the chin up bar and just hanging from it for as long as you can. And then um, anything that involves that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it just looked like it just got back from the club. Just toss it right over, oh. over a tree branch. Yeah. Go to kids gym. Yeah. And just yeah. do two pull-ups with it and hang from it and all that good stuff. And uh, dude messed up your hair. Uh -oh. man. All that illegal, Farmer hair cutting. You know what my dad? My dad has good hands, good strength, and my dad always would um, come up with things like uh, turning screws with a screwdriver instead of using a screw gun. Yeah, you know, which that's a repetitive thing that you can burn your burn your uh, tendons. Up. Yeah, you can hurt yourself with that stuff too. But just those kind of things are so simple and and and. Deadlifting without straps. I don't like to use the straps anyway because the straps put compression on you. Hmm. You know, I don't, so even, I, try, I don't even own any. Yeah, I try to stay away from those because I kind of feel like the other side of that too. So there's two sides of that, two sides of the argument. One is your hands are sabotaging your back strength because your hands aren't strong enough. The other side of that is um, your back might, you might be saving your back because you're pulling weight you're not ready for yet. Your body as a whole is not ready for this. So if yet. you understand what he's saying, your grip strength isn't enough for your back to grow or vice versa. Right. And then yeah. somewhere in the middle of that is an injury. Yeah. So, you know, I don't I've, lift anything that heavy. No, I don't. No, I don't. I mean, I've had my moments where I've pulled some heavy weight, but now I, I feel like if I pull somewhere between 315 to 400, 405, you know, I'm pretty happy with that, and I'll chill there. I'll just I think stay that, in there. That, that, that grip strength is like a lifestyle thing. Most people just don't pick up shit. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I move firewood like crazy, and I'll purposely grab, like, two of the biggest logs I can get my hand around and right. carry them. And it right. sucks, and you got to be careful if they slip. You don't drop them in your hand, in yeah, your yeah. foot or something, but or like do it. Carrying groceries in, yeah, groceries, man. One trip, man. Hook them all, get them on all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get them on your fingers yeah. and just take them all. I do in. it all the time. Yeah, I mean, things like that. Cinder blocks or bricks. I don't know. I used to work for a brickie as a kid, mixing mortar and oh, stacking yeah. bricks. So you got that thing where you grab it. And yeah, it's yeah. Like but but even, but even bricks. like if it was cinder blocks, you know, blocks. You don't yeah, you just grab them time. here. But you grab yeah. them suckers and just. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. Um, but I think too, there's studies that link grip strength to heart health. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's a ma just a a matter of that you're more active, so your grip's stronger. So you know what I mean. You're doing right, things. Right. If you have a strong grip, you did something to build that grip. Yeah. So then that you know, but either way, I mean, it's still worth looking into. Mm -hmm. And just that a farmer carry. Here's the thing: you can. If you were to ask me, like, hey, you know, should I run a 5K every day or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or should I do, like, a farmer's carry, you know, for a shorter distance, you know, two, three days a week mm -hmm. for 20 minutes? But like, do the farmer carry. Yeah. You know, because you're going to build muscle. You're, there's just going to be bone so density. many other. Yeah, Wolf's, Wolf's Law, right? You know, that the, the application of weight increases bone density and muscle, mm -hmm. you know, so... That's the kind of stuff you need as we age, too, you know. It's just, so everybody's going to grow old. There's nothing you do about that, and time always wins. So why not try to – yeah, exactly. But why, why not try to prepare yourself for that day, too, you know, and have those – I just posted a video of this woman. I bet she was in her 70s doing freaking – I forget the name of the exercise where your back is on the bench. you got a bar over your pelvic 
Oh, she, hip lifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing hip lifts with like 225 Oof. and just nice. a bunch of bunch of cool exercises like that. She was a 70 plus year old woman, maybe even oh, older. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But getting after it. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. And that's what keeps us young, mm -hmm. if not at least keeps us healthy. You know, there's not much we can do about internals, you know, wanting to shut off. But if we can keep our externals strong, we're good. So how'd you get that arthritis, dude? I've had bad I've had times in my life I couldn't turn a doorknob. My joints were so jacked. Yeah. Even still. So Derek's commenting. If you guys are reading any of these, Derek's trained with us a few times. He's a personal friend. Um, he says that it's it's uh, scaled to your skill level, which is kind of what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't take the low lowest guy on the totem pole and push him to do something unsafe, and you wouldn't take the guy that's got massive skill and meter him back to some remedial thing because then he's not learning. Yeah. So you push that guy. Literally, some of them get pushed. Yeah. Everybody is going to get pushed, no matter what their skill level is. There, there's going to be something there that's going to push. <laughs> when my son was 12, we had a serious talk about balms and the dangers of soap. <laughs> <laughs> toothpaste, boys. Be Co careful of Co the toothpaste. <laughs> cocoa butter. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just remember cocoa butter. It's all good. Uh, and it's good for you. Cocoa butter is good for you. Hello, Francais. Yeah. That's funny. Agency I'm with, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the funny thing about any large organization or organizations. Kettlebells are fun. I just like to use, I don't want to have to buy more stuff. Like, I've got so much stuff already. Scott had those ones you can fill with sand. Those were cool. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, those were you cool. Know? So you can, those are travel, easy to travel with. Excuse me, where's your sand pile? Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're out there taking <laughs> taking soil out of the potted plants in the hotel lobby. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I get in my workout in. Yeah. That was my Scott invitation. Uh, yeah, that's exactly I'm how I'm talking about there. Workout I, you gotta, man, I gotta get my workout in. That I'm gonna dude's do damn, damn, awesome, damn, man. Been in that damn truck for hours. That dude's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, how old is he? Uh, 48. Is he? 49. Cow. Would you think he was the older or younger? I, I wasn't sure how old he was, but yeah, I was like, man, I mean, he might be 50. Yeah, he's in good shape, man. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, a he beast. Hard. He's a beast. He works hard. He's on his Instagram, he's been posting stories running and gunning where he's like running and shooting and then running and shooting. And I'm like, man, what's going on? Applied performance shooting. CBD oil cures everything. I knew a guy that was broke and he took CBD oil mm -hmm. and now he's not broke anymore. I take baths in it. I, I knew another guy who was blind and now he sees from CBD oil. I knew somebody else. His wife was a bad cook and he put CBD oil on her pillow every night. <laughs> and she became an excellent cook. <laughs> she became an excellent cook. Yeah. She gave yeah. a chef Kent. Chef yeah, Kenny. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I won a dance contest after putting CBD oil on the bottom of my shoes. Did you? Mm -hmm. No doubt. I, I I tried CBD. I kind of like. I just joking. I do like everybody. It. It's kind of like like oh, oh man, it, like oh your essential butt hole hurts. Eat some yeah. eat some CBD oil. Yeah. Essential oil thing. Yeah, I, I kind of like it though. So, um, when we were in Colorado to do an unthinkable class, William April, and uh, he's like, hey, while I'm here, let's find a dispensary so we can um, get high as. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> let's find a dispensary so I can get some CBD because it really helps him. So we were talking about that. He said that. Uh, he kind of thought it was like a placebo type thing. Um, and he was kind of like, oh, you know. And then something came up where he switched to a different type or different kind or whatever it was. And his joint pain and stuff started coming back mm -hmm. after a couple weeks with this different stuff. So then he switched back to whatever the other was. So we went to a dispensary. It's funny. He's like, yeah, let's see. If, why don't you look up in your phone and see if you could find a dispensary near us? And I'm like. Bro, there's like green crosses here. Right, 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 bro, right. What in. are you talking yeah, about? Make one. a right. So we went inside and they wouldn't sell it to us because he wanted the kind that doesn't have THC in it. This They had to click on viewer discretion advised. To get in here? Well, I put it so that children couldn't watch it. Ah, uh, maybe. Is it because of the pistol? It's not a real pistol. I don't know. It's not. It's It's an inert. It's a certain. But anyway, so did you get some? Yeah, no, you have to order it because of some regulation there. 
uh, you can't you can buy weed and smoke it, but you can't get the oil that doesn't have drugs in it, or yeah, you can't get the oil that doesn't have THC in it. Not in yeah. a dispensary. It's kind of weird. That's very weird. I use. I guess it, the other uh, side of my me. sister gave me some that's got. Um, it's like a salve. Your sister that's a singer. Yeah, yeah, it actually works pretty good. That my bum shoulder, it, 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 it kind of like a Ben Gay kind mm -hmm. of a deal. You know, it promotes uh, blood flow and stuff. You should ever come to S twelve and she see. actually is a plan the next one. She's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, she's good. Well, you know, she's professional though, so to get yeah, down she's there, a pro. So get a pair. What's that about? Family discount? I blame Canada. That's a weird thing. <laughs> South Park, man. Blame Canada. Blame Canada Thank for you. everything. Farmer carry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there you go, man. I mean, I, th I think people have a tendency to overdo stuff, too. They do. So the trainers say they don't train with appendix. That's a, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a scary thing, man. You're pointing a gun at your penis. So all you're saying is the trainers in your area are a little bit older and nothing wrong with that. Um, Find a different trainer. Yeah. The, do we like the Scar? Yeah. It's a great gun. I love Scars, man. Those are awesome guns. They're expensive. They are expensive, but they are super cool. Thank you, Derek. That's that's true. Shout out to the ladies that train. Our friend, Katie. I got a video. Katie, uh, tourniquet on her right arm. She picks her gun up, reloads it. Between her legs, safely, we teach you how to do this. She reloads the gun one-handed with her non-dominant hand, punches it out, and hits a piece of steel at, like, 15 yards. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Katie was really cool. The other girl was Kara? Yeah. Kara. 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 They both are really cool. That's something, you know, so it's got to be intimidating walking into a place where it's just all dudes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I sometimes them. Yeah, right. I think it's cool though. The environment S twelve is such that it's just like just train. I'm like we don't care. Yeah. You know, you don't have like so. There's like in talking to women that train. There's there's two things that just annoy them, and and they can correct me if they're on here and if I'm wrong. But one of the things is like that white knight type thing where you honey, get the guy to honey. Con like yeah yeah. yeah yeah like you're not doing this for anybody else on the line. Why are you doing this for me? So mm -hmm. it makes them feel like. They're just not, you know what I mean? You're just that special that you need constant care and yeah, yeah. all that. And then the other side of it is where it's just, you don't belong here. Right. You know, like the two extremes. Go make a sandwich. Yeah, it's like, what? just treat them like everybody else. Guys, yeah. as she walks past, let her know mayo or mustard. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. So it's a joke. I think that's, um, I think that's pretty cool about uh, the events is that that doesn't, that doesn't happen. So... Um, but yeah, both of those guys. Yeah, both those guys. Yeah, really well. Kara from Colorado Crap Beep, exactly. Yes. Uh, Vince, you asked earlier, if, or Vic rather, if you could have the recipes, you would have to connect with Kent on that. I can't give out his recipes. Connect with Chef Kent. We are. Yeah, we're. He's working on a deal with the um, the power cereal that uh, we ate in the morning. The power cereal, the grains, and the the blend, and all that stuff that mm -hmm. he made. He wants to kind of do like the where you can order it online mm -hmm. yeah, i would i would love that that stuff is so good mm. you know like i come home from eating chef kent's stuff and i'm there cooking my ramen and i'm like man this is just not the same i do put some spices in it though it makes me feel like i'm chef kent in a way uh 13th apostle i don't know if i would it, it I don't know if, if somebody says they're not going to teach it. It also could be like, I can't teach what Paul teaches. It does mean I don't know what he knows, but nobody knows everything. So I got a friend, Bob Housingay, who he talked about Masai Yu. Bob created most of the pistol program for Masa's LFI courses. Yeah. He doesn't carry in the appendix. He's been around a long time. Yeah, and they don't allow it. Six-time national shooting champ. They don't allow any appendix stuff in their courses. You think you can't learn something from a, a guy that's um, been shooting and winning? Well, not anymore, but... As long as I've been alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because he doesn't carry it that way. Uh, I just talked to Ken Hackathorn the other day. Ken doesn't carry that way. Ken has trained more war fighters yeah. and the pistol than probably anybody alive. 
Harrington. Yeah, yeah. Dave Harrington too. Dave doesn't carry picks. that way. Yeah. They all carry on their hip. Yeah. I think Dave actually carries in the small of his back a lot when he's um, just out and about. Yeah, yeah. And you you can't say to those guys that have carried the guns, use the guns. Well, they don't carry. I think I, I think it's actually really stupid when people say you have to do it this way because everybody else is. I've got a gun right now on my hip. What, am, I, am I stupid? Huh? Should I shoot the camera? Huh? Huh? I'm not really going to. That's I'm not really going to shoot the camera. That's a gnarly holster, though, man. That's yeah. a nice holster. Yeah, that's the Langdon stuff, right? The JM? Yeah, JM's. Uh... Yeah, I like that. Man, it's got like a steel attachment point. Steel or... Oh, wow. Super hard plastic. That's pretty cool. Yeah, she's durable. I like it. Can I punch it while it's on your hip? See if you like will Try leave a it. bone bruise. Try it. No. Try it. See if no. You can do it. I need my fingers for classical piano. That said, I think if, if an instructor says it is bad and there's no well, I started, I helped with that program with NRA, mm -hmm. the carry guard program. Yeah. And when they started putting that together, the instructors that were in charge of the program were like, no inside the waistband at all. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. It's a concealed carry course. Safety issue. Yeah, and it is a safety issue. And I was like, well, you just need to know how to teach people to do it safely. Yeah. And if you can't, then what's the point of, like, if, if it's... Yeah, right, yeah, right. And we had a strong discussion. What are we trying to that. do here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, all right, we're going to train boxing, but there's no hitting each other. <laughs> yeah, and there's a... So Mike Brown is a really good dude. He's associated with ShivWorks guys. Um, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, won some competitions in jiu-jitsu, a high-level wrestler, you know, mm -hmm. wrestled in college. Um, and we've had this discussion because we were all doing the appendix in the waistband thing. And, you know, in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, we were discovering that weapons ahead of the hip, forward of the hip, in the waistband were easier to access in a tanglement. And Mike would not um, budge from, you know, hip carry. And his reasoning was he's a cop. He carries in a holster there. His everything in his movement patterns, signature, whatever you want to call it, is all based on this movement here. And he did not want to, in the middle of a, of a scuffle, have to suddenly rewire himself or whatever it might be. So for him, and it was also hours in a day type thing. Mm -hmm. like I've only got so many hours in a day. If I devote my 30 minutes of dry fire or my 30 minutes of live fire to this, or I, de or I can devote 15 to this and 15 to this, you know, it was kind of his thing. So he just 100% dove into that. It's a raw comfort thing for me. Yeah. It is uncomfortable for me to have this big 92 pointing down in my pubics yeah yeah for sure there's a comfort issue there i like the gun i want the gun but i have it on my hip all day long yeah there's some sacrifices right mm -hmm. yeah and farnham you know he carries two guns two full-size guns on him you know um behind the hip you know and that's the thing so i i think it just comes down to what you're it's like anything it comes down to what you're going to do like mike brown is blistering fast from that position mm -hmm. from in the waistband behind the hip or from his duty holster, you know, he's retired now, but that, it's just, what did he devote time to? Yeah. And you know what I mean? Just yeah. that consistent commitment to this course of action and you'll be able to execute. I was at a so, loved one's house recently, a female, and she doesn't have a gun, but you know what she's got around her house? I took pictures. I'm like, why are all these rocks here? <laughs> They were like cool rocks, like yeah, oh, yeah. I found this in you know Arizona on a walk, <laughs> but it's like a baseball-sized rock just sitting here and one over there. I'm like, you have all these to throw at people. She's <laughs> like, I do. She strategically <laughs> placed like like mug-sized rocks, and it, yeah, it, yeah. They, they weren't obtuse. It was like on a you know end table over here, but she knew in the dark she could freaking yeah yeah pitch rocks. So <laughs> it's like that's a shitty thing when you can have a gun but she's got little boys yeah and so gotcha. she knows if like you know it's not like it's not the plan mm -hmm. but it's a plan and like at the very least yeah. i can bludgeon you with this if you know you're yeah. doing raping me i can at least you get my hand something. on this and, yeah, yeah yeah something yeah yeah and like she knows where they're at in the dark it. yeah i'm like yeah, well that's yeah. actually i'm like that's pretty cool you yeah. got bludgeons all over your yeah. house <laughs> my grand my grandma has she's 99 my grandma has uh these like 
shillelaghs, you know, like oh, yeah, 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 she's yeah. got one of those right by each front, by the those front no door, joke. by the back door, by the garage door. Get over here, you son of a <laughs> yeah, bitch. She will, she will brain a dude, I'm man. Tired, she of the, will, tired of the shit out here. She will split a dude's head open with that thing, man. She just, those knows. are no joke. Yeah. And she, I mean, she got shotguns and stuff too. But, yeah. You know, but she also got shot. Yeah. She's got shotguns, but those are hidden away, you know, but. Yeah, she's got those things up there. So at least it's a plan. At least they thought about it. Vic, yes, we always add to it, Vic. We always add to it. And the other thing, Vic, if you came back to that same event, you would learn all kinds of new things because your brain only processed so much of that information. He asked what we would change. Oh. So Sasquatch wants to know if there's any outside-the-box thinking drills for functioning during an adrenaline dump. I'll let Paul answer first, and then I'll tell you what I would answer. Outside the box drills for 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 dealing with an adrenaline dealing with the, that mental visualization. Ah, that was a mental imagery. Was mental imagery is huge, man. Um, all those studies they did. Uh, the Russians did a bunch of studies where they had a group do just mental imagery, another group that did just the regular training, and then a group that did a combination. And the group that did the combination was way far ahead. The group that did mental imagery was slightly ahead. Of the group that just, just did regular did training, yeah, train. and so that was uh, such a revolutionary thing, you know, to, to like, whoa, we have not tapped into this supercomputer. Jared Reston says, "I've imagined killing a million men a million times in a million ways." Yeah, I heard him say that once, and I was like, "Ah, you know, somebody's like, you're sick," and he isn't be like he just run run it through his brain. Yeah, and not times. only that, but I think about I do mental imagery and rehearsal for. Um, Situations I've been in, you know, it helps, you know, um, you know, like everybody I've driven up on accidents and rollovers and stuff like that. And, or I've responded to them, you know, at work and you know, play through my head. Like, what should I do next time? What would be better next time? And if you don't have the benefit of that, then there's a, fortunately now we have YouTube, you can kind of watch things. And so you can just kind of play it out in your head, what you would do. But I just, I play through like, you know, like the stuff Don sets up, the D-Day guys, you know, um, left arm, right arm. Okay, my child's arm. You mm -hmm. know, how will I adjust this tourniquet for a child? You know, that, that's something to consider because sometimes the some of the some of the tourniquets don't adjust down small yeah. enough. So you have to make you have to figure out how you're gonna deal with that. And so different things like that. Uh, what if my child falls into the pool? What if my child gets into those little Tide pods or whatever they are underneath the sink, you know, they think it's, yeah, yeah, they think it's candy and things like that. And you just play it through your head, like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, secure the scene, right? Assess the scene, secure the scene, make sure everything's good. You know, if I walk into your basement and you're laying on the floor, you know, what's going on? Did he like get into the box? You know what I mean? Like, what? Yeah, right. He's smoking. Come over, Paul. Join me. Join it's me. A in, trap. Join me in front of the Victrola. It's a trap. <laughs> but but as vividly as possible, you have to see and feel everything, and even smell it. Yeah. You have to like every part of it. Um, play it out in your in your head, and what your response is going to be. And then that way, when it happens, it's not that much of a. Your subconscious is already. Yeah, you've got, already got a, got an idea. You've got well, maps. One right? thing that I. Um, have adopted that I've picked up from a handful of guys, Z being one of them, is uh, how did you phrase that? Okay, functioning during an adrenaline jump. A lot of people say overcoming. It's actually like like come Channel to, it, man. Yeah, come yeah. to terms with the fact that like this is cool. Like you'd give your speech on on being the descendant of people that use sharp sticks and rocks to kill saber tooth tigers yeah, and big shit. hairy things man yeah like uh, understand this is a pretty cool response making me super human to do superhuman yeah. shit and then you're not fearful of it where a lot of people are like why am i feeling like this why am i shaking yeah, yeah. why is my heart racing right so it's like i like this yeah yeah art devaney ah. yeah art devaney's a um i think he's an evolutionary biologist i'm not 100 percent on that Sinner. yeah but he had a really good blog back in the day um, where he talked, he shared a lot of stories like that, just like our ancestors mm -hmm. who he descended from stories of like these native American kids. There's four of them. They went out and were hunting bison, um, basically dug a pit, ran the bison into the pit, killed them. And then a bison's like over 2000 pounds, you know, these four kids drug those things out of the pit, you know, quartered them, did whatever they had to do. And then took the meat back to their village. Like that's who we descended from. Mm -hmm. 
You know, those are the kinds of people that were wandering the earth. And it's kind of funny because now we look at it and these people are all in like murder hornets. Right. I'm like, just smash that man. What uh-huh. are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about, bro? I'll bring a prey mantis and just turn them loose on it. Yeah, yeah. Boy. <laughs> yeah right. But I that's yeah, the thing. We we underestimate our ability. Right. And that when that adrenaline dump happens, you know, I think I was talking to Super Dave about it one time. We were talking about when that adrenaline dump happens, like you should dig it. That's the ultimate drug. Right. Adrenaline is it's just and a hell of a drug. Motorcycle. You gotta love it, man. Yeah. And and when that adrenaline hits, like you can't overcome it. You gotta channel it. Like this is a gift. Like God or whatever it is that you believe in gave you this gift that makes you superhuman. Now just channel it. Mm-hmm. You know, through the mental imagery, through rehearsal, through actually doing the work and all that stuff. And now's your opportunity to just go hit that afterburner, man, and run. So the next S12, Brian McKenzie, the Art of Breath guy, is going to be down there to do blocks on. I like his stuff. I checked him out after you were sending mm-hmm. me that stuff. There's a couple guys that talk about that. I like it. There's a uh, Brian Rose, mm-hmm. the London Real guy. Mm-hmm. He Did you ever see the episode where he taped his mouth shut? Mm-mm. He taped his mouth shut so that while sleeping, he would breathe through his nose to force himself to take you know advantage of that process. And he he said he again, man, it's all like anecdotal and empiric, whatever. But he just said like, hey, man, I I felt a difference. And Brian he, stuff they've been validating it with science though. Well, here's the thing, right? Whether whether science, Terrence McKenna had a said in um the trilogues at the edge of the west he said there we reached a point where we had to say and he's talking about like tripping on shrooms and stuff like that yeah but yeah, it's good to bring that up yeah yeah well i just wanted to like clear it out you know but he was talking about we had to we reached a point where we were starting to to um re- to realize some superhuman results with our brain you know with our ability to learn and process and we had to just accept that science would have to catch up later yeah and a lot of times that's what's what we see happen, right? Yeah. Like w- with performance enhancing drugs and things like that. You see all these guys like in the eighties and nineties, bodybuilders and powerlifters, like, no man, this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and then two thousands and is when science is like, Oh yeah, yeah, there's something to that. Mm-hmm. You know, and not harshing on science, but it's just sometimes they're kind of reluctant, you know, to just take that leap because they need like hell, look at the the germ theory. It was eighteen fifty eight, I think, the Austrian doctor kept looked at all of these women keep getting sick and dying in the obstetrics ward right. and he looked and it was like what's happening here well the doctors go from the autopsy room to the birthing room and they don't wash their hands Ugh, and yeah. we didn't think anything of it or right. they did it because they didn't even know what there was no microscopes they didn't know what germs were right and he's like hey guys let's try this and he made a simple concoction of something that he thought would kill bacteria and it did and all of a sudden women stopped getting sick babies were born without infections Issues, yeah. and the doctors didn't like it they uh they were like well we want to go back to kind of what we what we always did this guy in in discovered germs uh, the irony is they put this guy in a mental hospital he gets beat they beat him in there is what they think like you know shut up idiot we're yeah, talking yeah. about invisible things yeah yeah and he died of an infection Oh, wounds yeah, from the the wounds. Oh, man. that was only like 150 years ago. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like whether whether there's anything to substantiate it or not. Sometimes, if you believe it, that's enough, hmm. right? Like if you really believe it, the that whole placebo thing, that whole discussion about uh, World War II, you know, where the doctors like, hey, man, we let's have this big oh, argument. Yeah. yeah, let's have this big argument to convince these guys that we've got a super drug that's better than morphine, but we got to be careful because it might kill them. And then they operate on these guys without using anything. Later, people in, you know, because Monday morning quarterbacking they is kind of was, our they thing. They said it was horrific. Unethical and, and, and immoral. What and, he's talking about is literally documented stuff. That battlefield surgeons had no morphine. They were operating on guys with zero drugs. But telling them, yeah. like giving them a hit of saline basically right, and telling right. them this is a super morphine we're not even sure if it'll work it might kill you but and the guys would be like do it yeah, yeah like <laughs> d- hit me let's do this and then they would they would be fine and so that again man that's supercomputer you know we have this complex incredible thing between our ears and we don't take advantage mm-hmm. of it so 
Man, there's that something complex to super thing between my legs. <laughs> <laughs> An S12 dick joke. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't stop. It's good. Yeah, why stop? Why stop? Can't stop, won't stop. It's true though. Yeah. We and that I think goes back to the question of overcoming or working with adrenaline. That's like brings up the whole talk of 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 self-talk. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you talk to yourself? I'm scared of this thing. I'm scared of this thing. Or uh, this is going to go poorly. Or how many times did we hear people this past weekend say, "Man, I'm going to look like an idiot." Or mm -hmm. I'm going to go do my, going to go step up and screw up, and be yeah. like, "Hey, dude, what?" Yeah, you don't know till you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it, man. Let's go. Yeah, you know, don't talk just... to yourself like right. That. Yeah. Every time this thing happens, I fall apart. Every time I get in traffic, I lose my shit. Every time my boss lays it on me, I get, I, you know, I. I whatever yeah 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 you got to rewire that man. yeah you got to rewire that there's the, the, the that self-talk is so important mm -hmm. it's incredibly important and mm -hmm. it's just and it's always just a slight switch you know like a slight switch like you know we've talked about it before you know like oh man i gotta go to work today no i get to go to work today you know 15 percent of the u.s workforce right now is laid off that's an incredible number yeah it is and it's growing you know i, I was listening to you know so my wife was um, on a conference call, while, you know, I was in the next room and I'm listening to, and they're discussing like furloughs and all these different things to try to keep everything keep running. Yeah. It's like, how do we keep them working, but also keep the lights on and all that stuff. And, and um, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work, you know, and, and I've had those days where it's like, man, I got to. I have to get up and go clean the gym because I was tired last night and I didn't before I left. You know, it's like, no, I get to. Mm -hmm. How many people get to do what they love to do? You know, I get to do this. You know, I get to work out. I get to go to the range. I get to. It's a mindset. Yeah. You know, like I get to have Don or Dan or Joel tossing uh, a tourniquet at me in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I get to show potential. I mm -hmm. get to do this under get pressure. To be exposed to some pressure. Yeah, I yeah. get to do this under pressure without bleeding out if I screw up, you know, with these guys at this level standing there going, well, here's a better way, mm -hmm. you know, like here's another way to do that in the future, or maybe stage your tourniquet a different way. Or, you know, you had the red out that's, you, you know, red towards the heart always, you know, makes it easier to tighten and different things like that. It's like, I get to, you know, just that shift, that mental shift, man, mm -hmm. puts you in a different place, you know, where you have a different mindset and now you can kind of see better opportunities. Instead of seeing obstacles, you just see opportunities, and yeah, it's a it's a whole mindset, man. That's the kind of stuff we talk about at S twelve nonstop. No, it is actually. Yeah, well, actually, that's it, what I mean. We yeah, do. Yeah, we do. Because we all think like that. That's yeah. That's yeah. the thing, right? So you got what's that? That Nipsey, you know, the rapper Nipsey Hustle. You know, I have no idea. This is like Leonard Skinner, man. <laughs> In thirty eight special. Thirty eight special. <laughs> this creep doesn't like. And are you? Oh, if I, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Roll with the changes. <laughs> they should have been playing on the Titanic. <laughs> they should have been the band on the Titanic. But um, yeah, but yeah, like you know, he had a saying that you know, if, if your circle's holding you down, it's not a circle; it's a cage. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. So we have like through S twelve, and we have this circle that's not holding you down at all. It's propelling you forward. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's actually creating this like area where you can work like i hate using the term safe space but um prior to it getting hijacked Comfort, from a comfortable space or, yeah prior or, to for in my world where i came from so like working swat or undercover things like that you're kind of your safe zone or your safe space is something that you fought for and created so then inside of there you could collect hostages or you could collect friendlies or whatever it might be and you created this zone where fire could come in or the medics the swat medics later on once we got to that point we had medics on the team, you could, those guys could go to work and do good things, right? Save lives and all that good stuff. So for me, when I think of a safe space or I think of that safety circle, that's what I'm thinking of. It's like, this is a circle where inside of here, I can do anything because all these dudes out here have my back. They got me covered. You know what I mean? Like they got overwatch, you know what I mean? And that's a, that's a really cool thought. You know, like if you know, there's no way you could screw up. Like if I know, you know, I got this safe area mm -hmm. where I can do whatever I need to do. What's holding you back? 
you know, and that's the thing. It's a, there's nobody there. It's like that crab in the bucket thing, you know, where you start to climb and the crab pulls you down. Back, yeah. yeah, he can't get out either. So you're not definitely not going to get out. So, <laughs> you know, but instead, you know, we're kind of like, hey, how we get out of here? Let's create this, you know, whatever. Right, 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 right. That's the thing. And, and they also make good connections there, too. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of those guys end up connecting and, you know, it's good for them on a lot of levels. Yeah. You know, business opportunities, business, employment opportunities. Personal development, friends. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. Not everybody's going to leave there and be friends with everybody, but there's definitely like two dudes, three dudes click, and they become yeah. like, and they find out they live near each other, and yeah, for sure, nobody's leaving hating each other, but not everybody's going to. You're not going to get sixty people together and they all become best buds. But. No, I mean it's like you know, like anything, right? You get a you know a bunk room or something like that. You got some dude that snores or whatever he does in his sleep. That you know, what I mean, that's going to annoy you, or you, it's like anything, you know, like. People get on each other's nerves to some degree, but then at the end of the day, we're all working together to get better, and you just end up overlooking a lot of that stuff, mm-hmm. which is also good for people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, man, because we get so used, especially in a society now where so much, like now, this work from home type thing and stuff like that, so many people could probably function for most of their professional life without really having to face real time, real yeah. life contact with other people. So you get, kind of used to this world where you can just do and say whatever you want and there's nobody around. You don't have to tolerate anybody else's little idiosyncrasies or whatever it might be, like their little quirks. And 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 so then when you are around people, you just are like irritated, mm. you know, like you're weak. Yeah. Like, why do you got to do that? You know, it's like constitution. Yeah. It's like, no, man, it's just who they are. It's just him, man. That's how he eats. That's what he does. You know what I mean? That's how he, he talks. So, annoying. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's just, I love that. That's my favorite thing. I love that. But but we lose the ability to, to tolerate other people and appreciate other people and just be like, hey, man, whatever. You know, that's his thing. You know? We're, none of us are perfect. No. Yeah. But if we, if we live in a little bubble all by ourselves, we begin to think that we are. At least I do. Tax snored every night. He did. <laughs> If you guys have questions on it, shoot us a message. You can if you yes. leave a, a comment here, I'll read it. Uh, but I read them infrequently. Send a message to training at carrytrainer.com. You can get a hold of Paul through Paul underscore sharp underscore SBG on Instagram. Instagram. Yep. And on Facebook. SBG Illinois SBG or Paul Sharp. Or Paul Sharp. Yeah. There's a lot of us still. So oh, there is. Yeah. But it'll usually be a profile picture of me in some oh. way because I'm vain. I got to be out there. Hey, what's up? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. usually, it's usually something clown, though. Like when they took and put oh. my head on a Teletubby body, that was too good. I could, or the Nickelback song, the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my face in the picture he's holding. Yeah, that really? was awesome. Oh, who did that? One of my friends did that. Like, <laughs> that was so good. That was such a good Photoshop. Probably the best one ever. Next to um, Kato. Carrie, he did a good Photoshop. I got to find that one. He Photoshopped me. I thought of that song too, Sasquatch. Which song? Carly Simon. No. You're so vain. You know, who does she write that about? Didn't she write that about another popular singer so. at the time? I think so. James, uh, whatchamacallit? James Taylor. Didn't she write that about him? Maybe. Yeah. He's got an interesting. See, man. An interesting book that he just came out with. Don't it was about piss James off. Taylor, don't piss yeah. off a woman that's a songwriter. Taylor Swift, right? Kelly Clarkson. They write songs about you. They will write songs about you, and they will become hits. I just got to remind remind you guys. He has Britney Spears on the shirt. Boom. All right, I'll tell you the story about the Britney shirts. Do it. So, one of my best friends at the police department ends up killing himself. That's another story. But uh, back in the day, we were at his house playing pool. And he had, you know, back when you still had CDs, so he had the CD tree. And in the CD trees were all these Britney Spears CDs. Why? So I go, Chad, what the heck's with the Britney Spears CDs? She's talented. I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) She's talented. She's talented. So we kind of go back and forth. And he was uh, one of those guys that um, you couldn't tease him too much because then he'd get mad and he'd Mm. he'd want to fight you and stuff. So, of course. We got to tease him until he wants to fight. So he ends up throwing us all out of his house. 
because he's just done with us. We we're just like, get yeah, out, everybody, get out. Yeah. So we were making fun of Brittany and all that. So I ended up grabbing one of his shirts. So I had his shirt and I put it on. With Brittany? Yeah. So I put one of Wait, not only did he ever see it easy in her shirt? Yeah, he had a Brittany shirt. And so um Jeez. So I put this shirt on, blah, blah, blah. So he kicks me out. So I got the shirt. So I'm like, I'm not giving it back. That's how that works. And so, <laughs> and so, uh, and so I was wearing this shirt and somebody took a picture of me and um, somehow or another it got spread around with me wearing this Britney shirt. And um, now it's just, and then stuck. now I, people send me Britney shirts all the time. Like Les sent me this one. Um, Let me scan what she got on. Okay. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I do me. So we went like uh, to Serious Town, and then we wrapped it up with Paul's pop video yeah. vocalist. But yeah, so Brittany that's Chad, and then, so now I can't, I can't stop doing it because you know he killed himself, you know, back oh. in two thousand four. So that's horrible. He's a good friend. So man. it's a memory. It's a memory. You're it's a good memory. Your friend that took his own life with Britney Spears. It's a good. It's a good memory. He's okay. a good dude. Okay. Good dude. I dig it. So, Rest in peace, yeah, yeah. Chad. Yep. To bring it right back around, if you guys are interested in this class or any other, carrytrainer.com for the S12 event or any of our other courses. We're going to be in Amherst, Ohio coming up. We've got uh, just outside of Denver. We've got Alaska. We've got... Uh, somewhere else. Oh, Iowa, Michigan. And Paul's gym will be back open, and he travels yes. around with his courses as well. Send us a message. Tell us you love us. We love you, too. North Carolina is not on the books right now, but we will be back in uh, Nashville. Nice. Peace out, guys. Oh, yeah, Princeton. I forgot about Princeton. I got to go there, too. Be good. Jersey. Jersey. Visit our website, carrytrainer.com, for information about classes held throughout the U.S., Kerry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at carrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement. Training at carrytrainer.com or carrytrainer.com.